everything in the heavens and the earth has submitted. Like the sun obeys the commands of God. The, the rain obeys the commands of God. Everything, even us, like for example, being in our mother's womb for nine months, coming out, drinking milk, growing up, our teeth growing, becoming sick, becoming old, dying. All of this is submitting to the Creator. But with human beings, we have a second choice because we, we have a free will, we have a choice where we can actually choose to submit or choose not to submit. But a bit I didn't get is, um, you all know the, the Bible is made up of yeah. stages and it's mixed up and yeah, yeah, Greek yeah. and this. Jesus is not his name, but they still call him Jesus for some reason. It doesn't, yeah, that yeah, doesn't yeah. make no sense to me. Yeah. But if, 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 if the angel Gabriel came to Muhammad yes. and he, he spoke to him, yeah. how, how do you, what I'm trying to say is, how do you just take out the Bible? You know, like, do you know what I mean? Like, see the, get where I'm coming from. See, the thing is, as a Muslim, so like everything has to ha everything has to be understood what we're talking about. Bible, Biblius, a collection of books. Mm. So now, like Protestant Church of England, they believe in sixty-six books. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Catholic seventy-three. Yeah. So others more or less. So this is what they're talking about the Bible. As Muslims, we believe what was given to Moses. We believe Moses received revelation. So believe in the Ten Commandments. The Torah. No, I'll come to it. We okay. believe we believe Moses received revelation. Yeah. We believe like the prophet David, Dawood, he received revelation. We believe Jesus received revelation. But we're saying what the Jews and Christians have today in their hands, we can't trace it back to those. Yeah. Like even if, even if you put the Muslims to the side and you put the Quran to the side. Yeah. Biblical scholars are going to tell you that these books, we don't know the majority of the yeah, authors. Yeah, 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 Even yeah. though the names given yeah. are later ascriptions, which we don't know who wrote them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of these books were written hundreds of years yeah, after Moses. Years, yeah. After Moses. Yeah. The, the books of... Uh, like even, even the, the New Testament, the majority of the books are attributed to Paul. Yeah. 13 letters. Yeah. And the scholars say... Uh, from those 13, three of them, they agree. The majority of scholars agree they're not from Paul. Someone else has written them and written Paul's name on it. So the thing yeah. is, without, without the Muslims, without the Quran, we're going to say that book is not reliable. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. When it comes to the Quran, we are saying the Quran itself, it, it tells you it is from Allah. It tells you it's been sent down, by the, uh, brought down by the angel Gabriel, sent down on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have the Quran, recited daily, practiced daily. Do we know why God didn't speak to uh, Muhammad in the Gabriel? See, the thing is, Allah sends uh, an angel by means. There's, there's an incident when the, Allah spoke directly to the Prophet Sallallahu when he was taken up on Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, uh, chapter 17 of Quran. But generally, Allah sends angels. The point being is, but the, the revelation we have in the Quran, it, it has been preserved. And it's something which has been continuously practiced, and we can trace it back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu When was the first Quran? When, the, where, where was the first Quran? Who had the first Quran? Where is it based from? Quran, in, Quran it means something which is recited often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's up here. Yeah. My so the Prophet here. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he reached the age of forty, mm. he used to go to a cave, mm. uh, just outside, just cl close to Mecca, Agar mm. Hira. Uh, so this cave, he used to go there and he used to contemplate about his people, the condition of his people, and try to worship God directly. Is that where they had the spiders with? Allah, and this is, this is what is mentioned. This, ah. is, this is a separate incident. Okay, yeah, this yeah. This is yeah, a separate okay, incident. Okay, okay. But here, this is when the angel Gabriel came to him and the first five verses of the Quran were, were revealed. Just five verses. But then the Qur'an was revealed over the next 23 years at different times and different places. But whenever the Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, he could not read or write. Whatever was revealed to him, he memorized. Then he would call companions. We have the names of 65 scribes. We have their names, their tribes, their father's names, details about them. These were the scribes. So whenever anything was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ would call them and teach them what he what 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 received from the angel, Gabriel. Yeah. 
they would write it down on whatever material they had and they would memorize it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then the Quran is being constantly recited daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, practice. Yeah. So that's how we have the Quran. Right. Okay. When the when the Prophet Muhammad yeah. died, yeah. twenty at the age of sixty-three, then the first Muslim ruler, Abu Bakr, in the first year, he called a group of companions who had memorized Quran from the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. They heard the Quran from the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. And he, and he gave them the responsibility of gathering all of the writings, all of the scraps, all of the bones, all of the pottery, and they compiled the Qur'an between two covers. So that was, that was when it was first written down. Right. So why, why, or is it, because I'm not 100% sure, but why did Muhammad uh, marry a nine-year-old girl? Why, it's, it's, okay. Why, why? It's not a problem, but I'm just, I don't understand. No, 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 see the, see, the thing is, I'll come to it, but are you? Well, you're with the issue of there's one God. He sent messengers and revelation. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so according to the the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, his history, he married Aisha when she was nine. This was something which was normal and accepted at that time in the community. See, the thing is, we're we're looking at it by our standards. Islam is not is not commanding you. It's not saying, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're Muslim. Now you have to give your daughter away at nine. I was just wondering, was it you know to protect her? Was it because you know? I... No, there's there's certain benefits. Like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his first wife she died, Khadija, and he when he was married to Khadija, his children they came through Khadija, his first wife. At that time, he never married any other women. When he travelled to Medina. Then he married Aisha. Aisha, she was given by her father, Abu Bakr, and her mother. They gave, the father gave her in marriage. The mother prepared her. Aisha, she was happy with the marriage. She lived, uh, when the Prophet died, she was 18 years old. So from that time, she, she never complained. She was happy with it. She used to boast that I was the wife of the Prophet I was given uh, you know, in marriage. So you see, and the benefit was because she was only 18 at the time, she, she was a scholar in her own right. And many of the things in, in the house of the Prophet وسلم, in the night time when other people were not there, she taught us those things because she was a witness to them. And she continued to teach people long after the Prophet وسلم, had passed away. So there was some benefit Did in the, the marriage. Did have any kids with her? Have... No, no. Right. Okay. Yeah. See, the thing is, for us, it's, um, for us in this time, it's something which is, uh, can be difficult to understand. Yeah. But you have to understand, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was in Mecca. In Mecca, the people were idol worshippers. Many of them, they opposed him. And they, they persecuted the believers, they tortured the believers, until they had to go to Medina. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went to Medina. In Medina, there were certain Jewish tribes who were there because they knew a Prophet would come. He fought against the, the Christians, the Byzantine Empire, the Romans. But what's interesting, if you see, his enemies, the idol worshippers, they never criticized this marriage. The Jews, they never criticized this marriage. The Christians, they never criticized this marriage. The first time this marriage was criticized was like in the 19th century, 18th century, you know, with the Orientalists, because they were judging by their standards. But the thing was, at the time, no one was against it. Yeah, 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 yeah. His enemies were not against it. Yeah. His community was not against it. Aisha yeah. and her, most importantly, she wasn't against it. Mm. Most of the narrations concerning the marriage, they come from her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She, was some, she was pleased with it, she was happy with it. Her father gave her away in marriage. He was pleased with it and happy with it. The mother, she prepared her daughter for marriage. So it, it was something which was acceptable. But it's, the point is, it's not something which you are commanded to do or you have to do. Mm. It's something which is allowed in Islam. But now I've got clari clarity over that. But the thing because is, because you hear people saying it, but I've never had the background of it. You know, I'm like, what was he doing? Was he trying to protect her from someone? Was it? Was it? You know, she came from a poor background, so her father gave her to her to have a better life. I was, I was like, you know, and I was just confused. No, there was there was some benefit that when he passed away, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she lived about 40 years after his death, and she was able to teach the people. Mm. But also, she was given in marriage by her. Abu Bakr, who was a close friend of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, but say, say for example today, I have daughters. 
my daughters, if they're 18 or 19 and someone comes to them and says they want to marry, I'm going to be very cautious because in this society, people, are, people they're, you know, they're, the way they think, yeah. they may not be, like, the man is not ready to provide, to protect, yeah, to yeah, yeah. take care of the, yeah. some women, they're not, they're not ready to have a, a family life, family, they're not yeah, ready. To, yeah, yeah, definitely. But in those times, it was considered more, more normal. It, it wasn't something strange in those times. So we're not saying it's, uh, it's not allowed. Uh, yeah, we're yeah, we're yeah, saying yeah. it's still allowed. But in this society, we're not going to do it because it's against the law of this land. And also the, the culture we live in is different. different. But it was something acceptable at the time. Well then, Baba, it's glad to hear that. It's, but, it's, it's cleared up a lot for me. You yeah. know when you, you hear people throwing these things at but you don't understand. You yeah, know, I was like, there must be something. Is there something behind it? I, you but know. you know what it is? I, I would say what's interesting is I generally find when people bring out this uh, point of the marriage of Aisha, but that's what you hear a lot of. That's what I'm like. I, I, my 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 uh, perspective on it, and I think many people they see it the same is when people can't argue the fact that God is one. The people can't argue the Quran is preserved. The people can't argue about the the completeness of Islam. That's something that they all throw at you. This is some, yeah, they yeah, can't yeah. they can't argue about the character of the Prophet Muhammad. They can't yeah. argue about the Islam being preserved. They can't argue about how Islam is spreading. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is something that's which that's they, they, they pull out. out. Yeah, they pull out. I've always been like, but is there a reason behind yeah, it? Yeah. I hear people throwing it out yeah. all the time. I'm but like, the thing is it, it wasn't a consideration at the time, it was considered normal. normal. Right, but yeah, still yeah. the point, still the point is you. Like if you if you know this to be true. But then you say, look, but I'm not going to enter. There's a, there's a very interesting hadith where the Prophet وسلم, said, hadith in, uh, you know, we hadith statements of the Prophet. وسلم. So we have various books where the statements and actions of the Prophet وسلم, are collected. So there's one called Bukhari, where Abu Huraira, he was a companion, he said, he said that the, the Prophet وسلم, said, Kullu ummati al jannata illa man aba. He said, all of my nation. So all mankind now is from the nation of the Prophet Muhammad because he's the last messenger sent for all mankind. He said, all, all of my nation will enter paradise except for those who refuse. So obviously the people around were surprised and they said, uh, they said, Man ya'ba ya Rasulullah, who would refuse? So he said, Man ata'ani dakhal al-jannah. He said, whoever obeys me will enter paradise. Whoever refuses, actually, whoever doesn't obey me, who disobeys me, he has refused. So it comes down to us. And the Prophet وسلم, he used to repeat to the people, Kulu la ilaha illallah tuflihun. He used to say to the people, say la ilaha illallah. Say none has the right to be worshipped by Allah. And then we'd add to that, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Say this, and you will be successful. This is the the most important thing. See, the thing is, if, if, if you see it to be, uh, you know, we're, we're not here to force. You know, Allah says in Quran, like He said, "There's no compulsion in religion. We can't force you to believe. You can't force me to stop believing, etc." But then Allah said, but the truth is clear from error. If you know it's to be true, that Muhammad is a messenger, the, messenger. The, is the last messenger, he was sent for all mankind, that Allah alone deserves to be worshipped, that the final revelation is Quran, Islam is the perfect way of life. You have to enter it. I hear you, brother. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I'm, I'm not going to pressure you, but think about it. I will see you again in shop. No problem. We're here every Saturday. It's good to talk to you. Inshallah. You need anything at Quran or leaflets? I've got Quran. I've got two in my house. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have Think two about in it. My house. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. No problem. Like Sorry, I, I forgot. What was your name? Chris. Chris, Chris. Yusuf. Nice Chris. to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Your wife. You sort of got kids, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your wife 